So what we're going to do in this practice is rank these molecules by SN1 reactivity. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you recognize the SN1 reaction mechanism, you form a cation as an intermediate. So if we're looking at SN1 reactivity, we're going to look at a few things. Number one is the leaving group. But what more importantly, number two, the cation stability. So we're going to look at how stable the cations are. So we're going to look at three different examples. We're going to rank them separately. So on this first example, we have a chlorine on this tertiary carbon. So if this chlorine leaves, we end up getting a cation right here as a tertiary carbon, tertiary cation. Then if this bromine leaves, we also get a tertiary cation. Over here, chlorine, we would get a secondary cation. Here, we'd get a secondary, but it's look, it's next to a double bond. So this pi bond can come over here and resonate, and this cation can move over here. So this is a lilac. And then this right here is just a secondary cation as well. So we're going to look at the most stable. So the most stable is an allylic because you have resonance. So this is going to be number one. Then we have a tertiary. Tertiary is pretty stable, but then we have two of them. So which one is more stable? Well, we're going to look at the leaving group. So bromine is larger. It's, it's down the periodic table. It's bigger. It's more polarizable. It's, an, it's more stable and has a negative charge when it leaves. So it's a better leaving group. So this is going to be number two. This is going to be number three. And we have two secondaries, a chlorine and an iodine. Iodine is down the periodic table. It's bigger than chlorine. It's more polarizable. It, can, it has more stable with a negative charge. So it's going to be more stable leaving. So this secondary cation or this SN1 reactivity is going to be higher than this chlorine. Now notice the tertiary cations over here and the secondary cations over here are exactly as stable as each other. Like they both have the same stability. However, the SN1 reactivity is different because of the leaving group. Now let's look at this second example right here. We have a primary cation that would form over here. So we have a primary. Over here, we also have a primary, but now it's a lilac. So primary, a lilac, and it would form right here. And just know that you have resonance, so you can form cation over here as well. And this cation is also primary. Now, this chlorine over here is just purely primary. There's no, it's not benzylic because if it were to benzylic, the chlorine would have to be attached to this carbon right here, and it's not. This bromine over here is simply secondary, and you'd form a cation right there, and this chlorine is also just purely secondary. So how do we rank these? Well, let's look at the allylic one. This one's going to be number one, most stable. Then we're going to look at any tertiary ones. Do we see any tertiary ones? No, we don't. Do we see any secondary ones? Well, we do. We have two of them right here. Bromine is a better leaving group than chlorine, so this SN1 reactivity is going to be faster than this. Then we have two primers over here, a bromine and a chlorine. Well, bromine is a more a stable leaving group, so it's going to be more reactive in SN1. Now, what about this last one? This one, last one has a little bit tricky. Well, we have a primary allylic carbon right here, so primary allylic. And on this primary allylic, you can have a cation right here. And if you resonance stabilize, you can have a cation right here. So you can also have a, you can have a secondary, a per, primary form, I mean, and a secondary form down here. On this bromine, if you just leave, you're just going to get a primary cation, nothing more, nothing less. Then on this one, it's a secondary allylic because we have resonance stabilization. And if we get a cation right here and this pi bomb moves, we get another cation over here, but this cation is actually tertiary. So we have a secondary and tertiary form for the resonance. This one's just vinylic, so I'm going to vin. And vinylic is really unstable. And then over here, we have a secondary allylic because of this pi bond right here. So if we form a cation right here, this pi bond can over here for the resonance. And we get another cation over here, which is also secondary. So two equivalent resonance forms. Now. How do we know which one is the most stable? Because like the majority of these are honestly allylic. So the least stable, we'll start off with the least stable. Least stable is this vinylic one. So this one's going to be number five. If you have a vinylic cation, it's just extremely unstable. If you have a primary one, it's also unstable. And we're not considering any of your leaving groups here. They're all bromine anyways. So now we have the third and second and first most reactive. So we have a primary allylic here. So you have a primary form and a secondary form when it's in its resonance. 
Over here, you have a secondary form and a tertiary form. And over here, you simply have a secondary and a secondary form. So if we're going to look at those, a primary and secondary form is going to be less stable than a secondary and a secondary form. And a secondary secondary form is going to be less stable than a secondary and a tertiary form. So we're going to have this as number two and this is number one. What do I mean by that? Well, the cation can either be on a tertiary carbon or it can be on a secondary carbon as it's moving through its resonance forms. Well, on this one, it can be on either a secondary or a secondary. And this one, it can be either on a primary or a secondary. And since cations want more substituted carbons, if its resonance forms can include higher substituted carbons, it's going to be more stable. So even though all three of these are resonance stabilized, the resonance forms actually matter. So it might, it might be best to actually draw out what does the second resonance form look like instead of just rushing to an example. And with these two, if you notice, they both start off on a secondary carbon. Both of these are secondary carbons. So it might look hard at first, but once you draw the resonance form, you'll notice that this one has a tertiary uh, format. Well, this one has a secondary form as its second resonance form. So just look at these. Let's reiterate what we went over. First thing we went over was just leaving groups and some basic resonance. Then we have more resonance and more leaving groups. So if you have resonance, it's more stable. If you have a bigger leaving group like bromine or iodine, it's the SN1 reactivity increases. And then if you have two molecules that have secondary cations at first, Look if there's the resonance stabilization and see if the other form of the resonance is actually more stable or not. So if it is, that's how you know which one is going to have a higher SN1 reactivity.